Unfortunately, due to South Africa's stringent labor policies, as well as that of uh, is restricting businesses from the ability to hire new labor, as well as firing uh, redundant labor, it results in wage settlement levels in the country being two to 3% above that of inflation, making it expensive for businesses to hire South Africans. What are the risks of South Africa's extremely high levels of unemployment? Well, in this extract from an exclusive client webinar, CRA analyst Becky Matlobo gives his diagnosis for the origins of the unemployment crisis in South Africa and the potential political and economic risks arising from it. Do bear in mind that this webinar was recorded on Thursday the 8th of July before the violence erupted in KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. Do reach out to us if you would like to discuss these and other risks in the South African environment to help you to mitigate the downside. So there's a number of things that I've mentioned here. The first is that as we see an, in, an increase in sentiment in the short term. However, the long-term outlook for South Africa is that of economic stagnation. The world is advancing far ahead of us and tourism sector will be negatively impacted by this. What is the consequence of that on the labor situation in the country? And it is as follows. It's unfortunately that of an unemployment crisis, which we gauge by looking at the official as well as the expanded number of people unemployed in the country from 1994 until the first quarter of this year. In absolute terms, on both indicators, looking first looking at the official unemployment level, which is the one in black line, is greater than that of what it was in 1994. The difference between that of the official and expanded rate of uh, expanded number of people unemployed is that the expanded number of unemployed includes discouraged work seekers, which is represented by the gap here. And this is a point of concern for us. This is in fact a worrying trend that we've been tracking for quite some time at the center is that a great proportion of South Africans are giving up aspirations for employment in the country, largely due to employment opportunities in the country being and great decline. And so what are the emerging risks out of that? There are three that we flag for you today. The first one is when considering income disposable income levels. When people lose their jobs, they lose access to income, they can't sustain their families and they can't sustain themselves. Meaning that they can't buy the products that is produced by businesses in the country. The second is that of crime. With the number of people unemployed sitting at 11.4 million, and a youth unemployment rate of 75%, unfortunately, it results in an increase in crime levels in the country. The mining sector being a fresh example of this. And in fact, over the past decade, there's been an increase in non-residential business activity of about close to 300%. And so that adds a burdensome cost on businesses in terms of security measures that they need to follow through in recent years. The third thing that we notice is from our polling data that would suggest that people, South Africans that are economically disadvantaged, they don't, they don't have a job, they have low income levels, are more likely to vote the, for the ANC more than the people that have, been, that have a job as well as high income levels. This means that the ANC could sustain its current levels while implementing policies that unfortunately result in the destruction of fixed capital investment in the country, as well as the decline in business activity in the country. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. So as much as there's a social economic uh, consequence of the unemployment crisis in the country, what is a positive in this aspect? And the positive in this aspect is that businesses now have a surplus of labor that they can use in their production process. But what prevents this? And we gauge this by looking at the average level of wage settlement and the inflation level from, 20, from 2005 until 2021, which is data which we have been privileged enough to get from Andrew Levy from his employment publications. Unfortunately, due to South Africa's stringent labor policies, as well as that of uh, is restricting businesses from the ability to hire new labor, as well as firing uh, redundant labor, it results in wage settlement levels in the country being two to 3% above that of inflation, making it expensive for businesses to hire South Africans. And South Africans are the hardest working individual. The most important thing on the average South African mind is the ability to get in a job. And this makes sense as a South Africa's high unemployment 
problem that I've mentioned earlier, as this would allow them to sustain themselves as well as families. Unfortunately, the aspirations as well as the what's on the top priority of the South average South African is not aligned with the policies that we see from the ruling government. And so what are the consequences of this? Unfortunately, the consequences of this is that in terms of employment levels in the country, South Africa then becomes a laggard of developed markets as well as that of emerging markets. With our near 40% employment level compared to Mexico's close to 60%, as well as being far below that of developed markets at 75%. Unfortunately, this figure that you see here, which we must flag for you, is a decline in the market share for businesses as, the, as this would signify a decline in income levels in the country. That takes us to the key risk alerts before we facilitate the Q&A. And they are as follows. Although we have seen an improvement in business activity in the country in the short term, in terms of sentiment, the long-term outlook of South Africa is that of economic stagnation. Because of this, we're going to see an increase. Because of this, South Africa will be a fraction of what we see in other emerging markets, resulting in increase in tensions as well as crime. The mining sector being a prime example this week, and a decline in tourism as less people travel to the country, mainly due to our low vaccination levels, which will negatively impact the economic outlook in the country in the years ahead. ESCOM, which we flag for you, will still be a key point of concern for businesses. Even though we've seen substantial good moves in ESCOM, however, we need an increase in these numbers more than what we have seen in recent times. And these levels did not come willingly from the ANC. These were done out of an immense pressure that we saw from our external forces. And in the absence of these reforms, we expect South Africa to continue on its long-term flagged trajectory in the absence of these key reforms. There's a lot that we do at the Center for Risk Analysis, such as the short-term, long-form form of reporting, informal as well as formal talks that we talk to you. If you need following up on this, such as the data that I've provided to you, which is based off the macro review that was published last week, please get in contact with Sherwin. We also encourage you to use our query service where you can ask us question anytime you like from our data or anything that you would like data on. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to sign up to our 30 day free trial. There's a link in the description below where you can access all of our content and upcoming webinars. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.